welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio and iHeart Radio, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you're watching us, listening to us, YouTube. This is Dark Mark. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian. Unfortunately, my co-host Hannah, she had a, a bit of an uh, emergency, so she's not going to make the show. Um, but you did say how beautiful you are, and uh, my guest, not not necessarily you lo- watching or listening. But she did say how beautiful my guest is and how she regularly gets missing the show. And she didn't want to say hi. But she was very impressed with uh, your uh, social media, your Instagram page, and er- everything that she's read about you. My guest here is, uh, this. I think this might be the first time I have an actual influencer on my show. <laughs> she's an Instagram influencer. She's a, an adult model. Her OnlyFans is one of the top OnlyFans around. And when you see her, you'll see why. It's the beautiful <laughs> Romy Chase. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. I'm very, very excited to be here tonight. I, I'm even more excited that you're here, Romy. I'm very, very excited. It's This is going to be quite a show. Uh, and before we get going, I do want to do my sponsors real quick, just to get them out of the way so we could just talk, 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 and whatever you'd like to do. Um, I don't have $10, so I can't show you my penis for an evaluation, but um, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, we do have our sponsors uh, real quick. Uh, Audible is our sponsor. If you go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS, you can get any book you want, a 30-day trial, which includes all of the Audible originals now. Now you have access to every Audible original. And as far as the books, I'm sure they have books on how to be a social influencer, uh, on, on, um, you know, uh, talking about how beautiful curvy girls are, all sorts of things, Um, just whatever subject you want. They got everything from Shakespeare to smuts. And then the Audible originals are arranged from uh, unproduced scripts for Alien 3, of the uh, adaptation of the Sandman comic book, uh, Bob Newhart interviews comics, all sorts of things going on there. So go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS, free book, free 30-day trial. You cancel the next day and you keep the book. Uh, also, do me home cooking. Now, uh, Romy, I would imagine uh, just looking at uh, your beautiful curvy body, you're not vegan, are you? I am not vegan, although I recently, for, you know, health reasons, decided to try a vegetarian pescatarian diet. Okay. So so I'm getting, like, meal kits delivered, like, three times a week, and I cook them myself. And I'm, I'm loving it, actually. I feel better. You know, I have more energy. Okay. I recommend well, that to everyone. <laughs> all right. That's great. Well, then, uh, uh, yeah, well, pescatarian is, is fine. You're moving in the right direction. But, uh, no, if, if, if you're ever in L.A., I have to take you to Doomies Home Cooking which is the best vegan restaurant you'll ever go to. Uh, vegan? I'm not, no, I'm not vegan, but I love it. I'm not vegan. My co-host is vegan. Who's not here, Hannah, but I love Doomy's Milk Cooking. I, I have for years. Doomy, uh, Phil Doomy, the, uh, the cook is uh, somewhat of a genius. And I was there about a month ago. I had the chicken cordon bleu sandwich and it was bigger and tastier than Popeye's chicken. It's delicious. They have what pasta. Chicken, that's not vegan, is it? <laughs> no, but it's not real chicken. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, it's so not real cheese. Uh, <laughs> the ranch dressing is a, is a closely guarded secret. They have shrimp po' boys. They have pulled pork sandwiches. They have a Mexican side that has flautas, burritos. The nachos were voted one of the best nachos in L.A. by L.A. Weekly. Uh, the only one without meat. She, he knows. He's got – if I put one of these things in front of you, you'd be like, this is delicious. I told you it was not me. You'd be, you'd be, uh, you'd be uh, very confused. They have a Big Mac on the secret menu. They have all sorts of stuff. Do me some cooking. 1253 Vine Street of here in LA. They have one in Toronto and they have one in Culver City. Hopefully they'll be getting one in Miami soon so we, you can try that. Um, also, we have, uh, we have uh, 20% deals. Uh, if you look in the uh, comment section here on YouTube and on our, our, our social media, at Dark Mark Show at Hustler Hollywood. Get your girlfriend, get your uh, wife, get uh, uh, get yourself a gift. Get some lingerie, get some pills, get some uh, whatever you want. Get some, uh, the, you know, they have all sorts of stuff. Uh, toys, 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 20% off and a free naughty gift at the Hostler Hollywood. We're also sponsored by Spy Associates. we got so many sponsors. Spy Associates, if you're getting spied on or if you want to spy on somebody, get some James Bond stuff. 20% off any order over $250. Uh, they have GPS trackers, bug detectors, all sorts of stuff. One, one more real quick. 
my favorite energy drink, Ray's energy drink. This is the best. You can't get this at 7-Eleven or the supermarket. This is like, they sell it at gyms, they sell it at GNC. This is the great bubble gum flavor. Zero calories, zero carbs, zero crash. I have a code that I'll be putting on the show and also on my social media. 15% off a case. Uh, get, uh, this is, a, as I said, great bubble gum. It's delicious. They have Baja Lime. They have all sorts of flavors. They're delicious. Ah, so good. Uh, sour gummy worms. Delicious. So get whatever flavor. All right. Now all the commerce is out of the way. I'm here with Romy Chase. And you are, you actually, um, you grew up in, uh, now I'm, I'm confused because somebody put a tribute page to you with a big robotic voice, which is annoying, that had all these facts about you and you said the facts are wrong. Well, oh, there's it's all sweet, sorts but... of bios. There's all sorts of bios on, on Instagram. Uh, I mean, on uh, on the internet. You know, people make all kinds of like pages about me, and some of the facts are wrong. Yes, some of the facts are right. Well, let's <laughs> clear this up. Were you bo- keep up with everything, so I can't keep correcting everyone. You know what I mean? It, it, what I say on my interviews, what I say on my website, that's accurate. <laughs> okay, so if you're interested, yeah, that's. That's 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 how you can know about me, Romy. Right. <laughs> Don't listen to the robot voice. Listen to Romy herself. She'll tell you how to the truth. Right. That that robot voice. That was actually um, one of the fans that did that. Um, I believe it, it was a fan from India. So they didn't speak English w- really well. So they didn't want to like reveal their voice and stuff. But like, yeah, a lot of the information on there was inaccurate. Yeah, there's a couple of them that have that robot voice. Romy Chase was born in Warsaw, Poland. And uh, w- w- were you born in Warsaw, Poland? I was born in Central Poland. It wasn't ex- uh, necessarily Warsaw, but it was Central Poland. Yes, I'm from Central Poland. Is it a suburb of Warsaw or is it a different, a different city altogether? Uh, Warsaw is the capital. I'm not from the capital. I'm from like the small town, you know, in the Central Poland. You, would, you could say Warsaw area. But oh, well, this is, Warsaw. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a, uh, too much of an allegiance to Warsaw, so I could really care less, but I just wanted to, I'm just curious what it's like to grow up in Poland. What it's like? Um, I guess small town Poland. Well, I, uh, I grew up in post-communist times, so it was really interesting. It was a shortage of everything. Um, we, my, my family, we, we had money, but you couldn't really, really even spend the money because there was shortage of product. You understand what I mean? Sort example, of, yeah. Right, I, I'll give you a, a simple example. Um, I love tangerines. And when I was growing up, you couldn't get tangerines. You could only get tangerines around Christmas time. Oh, okay. So we only had tangerines once a year. You know uh, what I mean? <laughs> um, other than that, I, you know, normal life. I didn't even have a real comparison until I really moved overseas until i moved here that's when i that's when i realized how much different it is you know well when you say here here is miami which is uh, uh yeah this is miami but but when i uh, moved to america i first uh moved to alabama actually <laughs> oh okay that's it that's <laughs> completely different it's it's very different it's only because i had some folks there that i knew and you know I just had a little deal with them. They let me stay there until I settled because it's really hard to move from a different country, you know, yeah. move all the way overseas. You don't have a job here. You don't have a car. You don't have a house. Mm-hmm. So I had to stay somewhere, you know, so I stayed in Alabama for a little bit. And then shortly after that, I moved to Orlando, Florida. Okay. Now, right. uh, now what I, I'm just, I'm still going back to the shortages. So like we, we had some, shortages of toilet paper and other things when the pandemic started. So it's like the whole grocery store like that, just empty shelves. Basically, basically. I mean, it was like, I mean, it wasn't like the whole grocery store, but there was like certain products that you just couldn't get Yeah. until, you know, a certain like season came. Like, right. You couldn't just get watermelon. So you, you had to wait for like the spring or like the, the, the holidays. Right, right. You know I mean? So, so yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely interesting. We had McDonald's, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, Although great. McDonald's back then, believe yeah, it or yeah. not, it only had like a Happy Meal, 
nuggets, hamburger, cheeseburger, and a Big Mac. That's nah, all. That's really all you need. <laughs> and that was actually a luxury for us. Well, I was mad. I would imagine it's a small town Paul. It's like, wow, the McDonald's. Wow. Right. Basically, that's probably where all the. the yeah. Right here, here everybody goes to McDonald's because it's cheap food. You know, quick food. Yeah. For us, it was a luxury. It right. wasn't like, hey, we go to McDonald's to just get some lunch. You you go to McDonald's on occasion. You know, <laughs> which is completely different. So, here. so when did you uh want? So were you always obsessed with America? Or did you always see America as the future? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, I wouldn't go as far as as obsessed. What it was is um. I always, I've been fascinated mm. with this place. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I come from, uh, my dad was a businessman, so he traveled a lot, traveled mm -hmm. to the U.S. He had all kinds of friends from all different countries, and he taught me English at a young age. So I always, you know what I mean? I, I was always interested in the culture. Right. And outside of that, I kept seeing American stuff on TV, you know, right, right. American shows, American movies, American music, right. you know, the, the music videos, you know, it was all cool for a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've always, I've always been fascinated, but I, I didn't really um, decide that I was going to move until like, until I was like 20 something. Okay. Right. That's good. I mean, you know, that's uh uh, not to mention the tangerines, so uh, <laughs> yeah, we have plenty of those. But um, so, so yeah. So, uh, but you, um, yeah, you, you actually, uh, you're very, very educated. You have a master's degree. <laughs> well, you're smart. And the other thing about uh, your, you know, speaking English, you barely have an accent, but it's the cutest thing ever because it's like a mix between Polish and like hip hop. There's a little <laughs> southern drawl there too. Well, that's probably what it is. Cause like, okay, I have a um, degree in linguistics, so I'm an English major and yeah. I studied American English actually. And then I became a teacher and a sworn translator back in Poland. But um, like a lot of that Southern accent that came after I arrived in America because I arrived in the South. Like I said, it was Alabama and then Florida. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I can so, tell. It's, it's, it's all coming out now. And as a foreigner, as somebody who has a knack for languages, I picked it up real fast, you know? I bet that, you that. did. A lot of people say it's cute, though. <laughs> yeah, it's adorable, yeah. It's like, you know, it's a, you just, uh, there's a, you can tell that little Polish lilt, and then you're like, Namin, you know, and there's a little, uh, yeah. Like, a little well, do you hear me mad? When I'm mad, people say that that Eastern European accent keeps <laughs> it comes out when I'm mad. <laughs> well, I don't want to uh, start yelling at you. That's that's when you go here, my my Eastern European accent. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to get you mad, but I will tell you, I, I've dated uh, I've dated Polish women. I've dated a lot of women from uh, Eastern Europe, and every one of them says that the women in their country is the hottest. I've dated Russian women. I've dated women from the Czech Republic. I've dated Polish women. I've dated German women, and they're all like, "Oh, we're the, you know we're the hottest." I, I actually dated a Russian woman and a woman from the Czech Republic, and I would pit them against each other because I would like, "Oh, the, the Russian." I, I know this Russian woman says she's they're the hottest. Like, "Oh no no, Czech Republic's the hottest," and they would go back and forth, and it was great for me. The Polish women are the hottest, though, right? Well, I mean, I can't really say that because, like, if you look at me and if you know anything about Polish women, I'm so far from the Polish standard beauty that yeah. it's really hard to say that. You know, I mean, I'm curvy, first of all. I'm thick. I'm busted. I, I, I noticed. <laughs> right. Polish women are not necessarily curvy, not necessarily busty. It's, it's usually the beauty standard is a slim, blonde, blue eyes, very pale. Um, so yeah, I'm really far from the actual beauty standard. But that's kind of, the, it's kind of the beauty standard in America, except not pale, but tan. But the Hollywood, the mainstream stuff, you know, that's the beauty yeah. standard, I, I would say all over the world, really, which kind of sucks. And I'm really happy to see that it's changing a little bit, you know, but yeah, growing up, I definitely had a hard time. Right. And I say that's the beauty standard, but I don't think that's really the beauty standard. That's the official beauty standard. But to me, that beauty standard is not from straight men. That's from gay men and women are, are really pushing that. 
I'm not sure who's pushing that, but I know that I have noticed that it's changing a little bit. It's becoming a lot more, you know, uh, common to be curvy. And you see a lot more curvy models, minorities, which is wonderful. It's yeah, wonderful absolutely. Thing. Especially when I arrived in, my, in America, that's, I really love that. That y'all are a lot more diverse, you know? Well, and, hot is hot. Right. And <laughs> you're hot, that, you know that. Like, right. Well, I mean, I could say that, you know. Well, we're gonna get into that, but I mean, I, I figured so, that. Yeah. So, I, but the uh, it was because um, I, I will tell you, my YouTube channel, the number one video, by far, exponentially, is the BB. I went to the BBW Con, an adult uh, convention for big, beautiful women, and that just has like, you know, half a million views. And my other videos yeah, range BBW from curvy, thick is in style, definitely 100%. Yes, and, and I had two videos now. I only have one. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I have two videos now. I only have one. I guess I'm flipping off YouTube because they took down one of the videos, even though there was no nudity. Yes, it was sexual. Yes, it was. Oh, I know that there's... a little too well. <laughs> well, that's what I want to get into. Now, you are. You have, you are an influencer. When I say you're an influencer, you have, um, uh, uh, you're, you're closing in very fast on a million uh, Instagram followers. Yes. Which, which is very impressive because that's, a, you've been doing it for a, like a year? Um, yeah, it's been like a year and a half, I think, at this point. Yeah. That's very impressive. It is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, you can impress yourself. Yes, go right ahead. But I mean, it's that, that's I mean that's a testament to you're putting out you're putting out content that people like. But how I got to, how I found out about you is that uh, you had a, you did an article about the bias against curvy models on Instagram. Right. Is there really? Well, from personal experience, I can tell you that I'm one hundred hundred percent positive that they are biased against larger women, curvy women, BBWs, thick women, busty women. Absolutely. 100%. And, and tell me how, because I follow a lot of curvy, busty women, and I, I guess I'm not seeing it. Uh, well, yeah, well, I could understand how from a user's, user's perspective, it's very, you know, hard to, to notice that because a lot of us don't even speak up about this. Right. Um, so what it is, let me tell you. Um, if you had if if you had a chance to look at my Instagram page, oh I did, right? Whoever hasn't, it, it's at Romy underscore Chase. And if you take a look at it right now, highly recommend it. Right, you you will see a strictly fashion page. I post fully clothed photos, fashion photos, nothing promiscuous, no nudity whatsoever, no sexual activity whatsoever. Although I still get targeted for those particular reasons for nudity and sexual activity or sexual solicitation for some reason. Um, and, you know, doing Instagram for like about a year and a half now, I've noticed that I cannot post what slimmer women post. And for example, I cannot post a bikini picture, which according to Instagram's guidelines, it should be absolutely safe to post a bikini picture. It should not get flagged for nudity or sexual activity. According to their guidelines, I do everything that they want me to. I follow every rule. Mm -hmm. That's their get targeted. Now let me tell you what it means to be targeted by Instagram. Um, not everyone knows because a lot of people think, okay, well, so she posts cute pictures and she gets 20,000 likes and she just gets a bunch of money. Well, it doesn't really necessarily work like that. I put a lot of work and a lot of effort into my social media. Um, so when I say I'm targeted, it means they remove my images, they delete it. Once the image is, delete, the, is deleted, they apply vicious bans on my account, which is, <sighs> among others, cutting my reach in half. Let's say my post normally reaches 300,000 people. Right. Under a ban, I reach 100,000 or 150,000. So the reach is cut in half. Now, that means technically, if 
only half the people saw it, then that means I lost a lot of money. I'm sure. Do you understand what I mean? I know I exactly, have, exactly what you mean. Right. The algorithm have, changes. Right. I so have that you're not reaching everybody you would normally reach. I have a subscription-based site that I promote on my Instagram uh, where, you know, the more people see it, the more likelihood there is that they will actually join. Your OnlyFans. I cut it in half, so I'm losing dollars. Another example is I haven't been able to go live on Instagram for about eight months now because oh. I'm banned from going live. <laughs> now, sometimes they'll ban you from doing comments, which, again... Uh, messes up your posts because the more interaction the post gets, the more you, the more they're showing it to. Of course, yes, yeah. yeah. So I, to... oh, I usually reply to comments under my posts. Now, mm -hmm. let's say I'm banned from comments. That means I'm being shown to less people. Now, another uh, another situation. I cannot post, for example, because they temporarily ban you from posting. That's another example how they will how they restrict your account. You understand That's, what I mean? And it I is, do. Yeah, it's absolutely it's absolutely horrid because, like I said, I follow every rule, and I'm a person that really likes to do research. I research everything. I read mm -hmm. every single guideline that Instagram put out, and I follow all of them. I don't violate any rules. Right. I'm still being targeted, and I, I the, the the biggest problem I have with that also is that. The, the rules are vague. They're not concise. They're not clear. Right. They're not How consistent. is it that I can't post this, but the other person can? You well, here, 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 again, you know, is it just you, or because you're saying? I mean, you're saying you could, you know, uh, somebody who's skinny is posting something that's pretty identical to what you're posting, and they're they're allowed to do it. Are, are there other plus size models that you know that are getting in trouble with this? Uh, absolutely. Well, ever since I put out a statement to the press about this issue, I, I've had hundreds of women reach out to me, hundreds, okay. um, sending me uh, screenshots and proof of their posts being removed, posts that were completely saved. Um, I would say that there's a pattern to it. Like I said, it's, it's mostly biased towards curvy models. As I see, as you scroll through Instagram, you see a lot of slimmer women in promiscuous poses in micro bikinis and that is that stays up it's fine right. but we cannot do that i don't know if it's offensive the amount of skin is it because we're over sexualized because of our bodies either way it's an issue that's from my experience that's that that really affected curvy models and well, it's to the point that like i'm i'm gonna tell you right now i have declined hundreds of offers and sponsored posts from companies right? because I cannot advertise the, con the content they want me to advertise. For example, lingerie company. I have mm -hmm. to say no because I don't know if Instagram is going to let me post that stuff. Right. You understand what I mean? So well, I'm losing, that's more money I'm, out, of your, out of your pocket. I, I'm losing tens of thousands of dollars every few months. I'm not even exaggerating. It's, it's really bad. It's gotten right. to it's really really bad it's let me ask you let me ask you something is this i, I and obviously the, uh, the the website that you're promoting is your only fans and we're gonna get to that because that's uh i've got some questions about that but uh um is it was this before you had an only fans or just the whole time the whole time well technically you're not allowed to promote only fans on instagram which i don't do that i don't promote only fans instagram not from really online. because Everybody I see promotes their OnlyFans on Instagram. Right. Well, yeah, right. Well, that's another example. Some people can't, some people can't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rules, again, vague, not concise, don't apply to everyone. Right. The standards are weird. And technically, according to rules, you're not supposed to uh, advertise any adult material, which I don't. I promote my website, which is romychase.com. And mm -hmm. that's where you can find a link to my OnlyFans. But I don't promote direct links to any adult site. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm not banning you. It's it's it's, it's Instagram. I don't to you understand? That. I got it. I got it. I got it. No, but let me let's 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 go into the positive on, uh, I mean, on Instagram because you've you've accumulated quite a following in a short amount of time. Now you were, 
as I said, you grew, you grew up in Poland, you were a translator, you have a master's degree, very smart, which that in itself is so sexy. But thank you. <laughs> it is, it is. Don't let anybody tell you any different. But, um, but you, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was about a year and a half ago or so, you decided to, uh, to go on Instagram. And I mean, I'm sure you had a page, but really um, build your brand and become an influencer. Right. Well, I believe how did, that, how did that transition I happen? Page. I did not have an Instagram account before this at all. Oh, okay. I never, I never cared. Um, what happened was I, like I said, I arrived in America and I decided, well, what can I do? Because now that I look at my degrees, they're kind of worthless. <laughs> There's not much money in teaching in America, yes. let's be honest. Oh, I, I know. I know a lot of teachers. Yes. I'm not, um, I'm not trying to work nine to five. I don't like it. I, I'm not made, I'm not made for that. That's fine. I, I'm supposed to be my own boss. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So no, I, just, I understand. I just, I just was like, what, what can I do? You know, what is it that I can do here? And I arrived in the South and I realized that there's these thick women everywhere yes. southern thick thickness <laughs> so i was like okay well they're getting a lot of attention i was getting a lot of attention Not from bad. everybody i was like damn you know <laughs> they like me and i've always been a sexual person extremely mm -hmm. sexually open oh really and i was just like you know what screw that i why not just embrace it so i started i decided to start in modeling uh, which was boudoir uh, photography and mm -hmm. um, like glamour stuff. And I decided that um, I was going to open up an account on Model Mayhem. And overnight, okay. I got like hundreds of hundreds of offers for photo shoots, videos, all kinds of stuff. And mm -hmm. so I just like took one of them and just went to my first shoot. It went terrible. <laughs> How so? I just, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know what to expect. I had no idea. And even though I had done research, because that's what I do, I research mm -hmm. stuff, I still, I showed up, it, everything just went completely bad. <laughs> it wasn't as planned. I didn't like any of the photos. None of the photos were usable. They were all bad. My face looked dead. I just, I just was like, it, it, it wasn't a successful shoot. Let's just say that. But then like really- That short, is an expressionless or that is an- like that, like that, like when you look at somebody's face and it just like looks dead, like no emotion, no nothing. Right, right, right. So that's what it looked like in every single image. And it was funny because as I was posing, I felt like I was expressing all these emotions. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> but <laughs> it was later on that I found out, you know, that everything that you do on camera needs to be exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Exaggerated. Yeah. Uh, facial expressions, exa exaggerated makeup, all that stuff, mm -hmm. it, it helps, you know, that the yeah. image look better. But yeah, so my first shoot went terrible. And then shortly after that, I scheduled another one. It, it went a lot better. And I just, that's when I started my Instagram after the second one. Okay. I started my Instagram and I just, you know, was doing my thing. It was just getting you know, some side dollars here and there for a little shoot here, a little shoot there. And I just, shortly after that, I just started blowing up. And, and how did you blow up? I mean, what I, a lot I of have, I, I, is, was it something that you prepared that you planned for that you did yeah. or just, it just, it just spontaneously happened? Absolutely. I prepared for that. Well, it was a little bit of preparation, but a little bit of, you know, luck. Right. but um I, di I did prepare for that I, I like i said um i do research i researched instagram i studied instagram yeah. <laughs> before i got on it i was like i need to do this right i don't want to just get on there and be like okay let me check this out let's try this out let's see if this works when i got on instagram i knew exactly what was going to work so yeah. that's what i did and i always say consistency is key Okay. As long as you're consistent, you will make it. You have a list of goals. What do you want? You know, this is what I want. That's where I'm headed. So, so yeah, I, I did that. And, you know, other than that, a little bit of luck because people seem to like me. Um, and I just, you know, 
started getting a lot of new followers, a lot of new fans. Yeah, and I just took it from there, you know. <laughs> is, is there one Instagram secret you could share with me? I'm trying to uh, upgrade my social media. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not, uh, I'm not a beautiful, curvy young woman like you, but is there anything that you can tell me and our fans uh, possibly how to, how to uh, conquer the algorithm that is uh, uh, against all of us? Okay, let's just, I, I'm going to say it like this. A lot of women and a lot of people, period, think that if, they're, if they do the most, they'll get the most attention. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite, okay? That's why you don't see promiscuous revealing images on my page. Right. The reason why is not even because I don't want to post it. Yeah, sure, I want to post it. Why, why am I posting it? You know, the less... Less is more, I would say that. And the reason why it is because these images that's clothed, good quality, fashion images, catchy stuff, that has a better chance of going on the Explore page. Once it goes on the Explore page, people from outside of your audience get a chance to see it mm -hmm. and possibly follow, you know? So that's one thing I, I would say to everybody who's trying to, at least people in the adult industry, because I, I notice a lot of women just be posting the most you know yeah Twerk, ping pong, all kind of hand bras all kind of stuff yeah mm, ain't no way that's not the way <laughs> leave them wanting more less less is more less is more yes. absolutely is more. so and uh so then you uh you, you 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 use the preparation but like you say you just you just blew up i just um well why do you think it was why do you think you blew up where other curvy models have not or other models period have not Actually, I shouldn't compare you to Curvy Miles. You're competing against everybody. Yes, and you're, I am. And you're well, as, if not more beautiful than everybody, and you have almost a million fans now. There's a huge gap between a regular Instagram user and a person who treats it like an actual job that it is. Yeah. This is my job. I treat this 100% serious. This is, this is what I do. I do this full time. So I strive to improve at all times. I always buy new equipment, new camera equipment, new lighting, mm -hmm. new outfits. I hire photographers. I, I actually, I'm hiring a personal photographer. I've been working with him for about six months now okay. or, or eight months. And, and it's just, you know, it, you always try to improve as opposed to just, you know, posting stuff. Mm -hmm. There's, there, there's all kinds of tips and tricks, you know, that you can use, for example. You, have, you, you do have to spend money to make money? Is that? Is yeah, that? well, that, absolutely. I always say that there, I, I, I do coaching also. And I, I get a lot of these girls that buy my coaching that try to make money in the adult industry, try to make money using social media. They're gorgeous women, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But they're just not willing to invest in themselves. There are a lot of them not willing to work. They think they post a titty picture and the men will throw money at them. You know, don't work like that at all. Right. <laughs> I keep telling you, you got to work, got to spend money to make money. The, ultimately, the more you spend, the more you make. Okay? okay. So, like I said, I treat this like a business that it is. Right. So you do, I mean, you, you say you don't work a nine to five job, but you probably work eight hours a day at this. Oh, yeah. I, I work more than that. Yeah. <laughs> work more than eight hours a day, for sure. Yeah, but 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 you and uh, now you've become an influencer because of all your Instagram followers. Now, what does that mean to you? How are you an influencer? What do you do? What do you uh, what are you influencing? Well, first of all, I try to be authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a lot of in influencers that just you know they're they're there for the paycheck, and you know this comp. I just I see this these atrocious ads of like women i'm serious like <laughs> women um posting a photoshop picture where they're a lot like they made themselves look bigger and then they post another one they made themselves look a lot slimmer you know <laughs> and, and the, the caption says this wonderful magic tea made me lose 75 pounds in three weeks you know what i mean oh okay <laughs> I'm just like, okay, you will never, ever see me post that. I don't care how much the company is going to pay, okay? 
I'm not doing that. <laughs> Have you been approached? Uh, yes, I, I've, had <laughs> kinds of, I, I've had all kinds offered that I declined because I was just like, I don't agree with your product. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm not doing that, you know? So I try to be authentic. I, I try to be relatable to my yeah. audience as well. That's what it means to me. I, I'm all about personal interaction, personal connections with my fans. You know, that's why, yeah, I, like I said, I treat this very seriously. You'll never mm -hmm. see me post no magic tea. Never, ever. <laughs> <laughs> mark it down. <laughs> You'll I'm going to mark it down and then in five years, <laughs> if you ever do it, I'm going to call you out on it. If I do, call me out on my bullshit, please. I'm going to call you on your bullshit, I'm telling you. <laughs> <What> you <do? laughs> but uh, uh, now, who is a Romy Chase fan? Who's a typical Romy Chase fan? Um... Typical Romy Chase fan. I guess there's uh, male fans and female fans, and there are there there are male fans and female fans and couple fans. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I would say majority of the people. I get their attention because of how I look, because right. of the quality of because my Instagram is my resume. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's like I post these images to try to get people's attention. And then based on based on my, my page, based on my Twitter, based on what I say, how I want to interact with people, they decide whether they like me or not, but they like me enough to subscribe to my OnlyFans. Right. And uh, so yeah, majority of people get there because of my curves. Either it's either my boobs or my ass or both. <laughs> well, I, I, I saw one, one of the biographies and it said that your uh, measurements are 42... 30 50 is that it, accurate it's actually it's actually 44 30 53 <laughs> okay i thought it was 44 i was like wait a second it is. I it over 44 double d's and i was like that looks like a 44 that's not a 42 it, it's definitely not double d's though it's it's way bigger and my band size is inaccurate my my band size is 36 okay Right. This is the band size right here. Oh, okay. This is the cup size. But 44, this is the inches measurement. Yeah, no, I, I got it. And then the cup size is different. Right. So it's 44, 30, 53, yes. That's, that's not too shabby. So, and, uh, you know, because I know people are saying you're sitting down, but uh, you got a lot of ass. Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's a lot. That's a lot of ass. Now, well, and, and, but you have a small waist. I mean, I this is... This is the ideal woman. Uh, this used you, to be the beauty I mean, standard. That's, you know, that's, that's objective or subject, subjective. Well, it's always subjective. Everybody's into what they're into. But uh, back in the 40s and 50s, Jane Mansfield, Marilyn Monroe, Betty Page, uh, Jane Russell. I mean, maybe not as, I mean, you have, I mean, even Jessica Rabbit can't compare with you. I mean, the, the, just the, <laughs> but that was the standard was the hourglass. Right. I don't know what happened. Blessed. I've been blessed. <laughs> no, you definitely, you definitely have. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, that's that's uh, you know, you're a pescatarian. It's a lot of fish going down that ass. But um, you just, uh, <laughs> um, and and I, I I think I guess it's ready for a comeback. Uh, so um, how do you how do you find pants? Your oh, waist is so pants. small, and your well, your booty is so big. It, it's an issue. Trust me. It's not, you can't just find pants anywhere. Okay. Right. I, I have to, there's, there's certain companies that kind of specialize um, in, in attire for curvy women, thick women. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, but even then, but, the, wouldn't the waist be too big? Sometimes, but yeah, like I, I just usually get stretchy jeans. I don't, right. I can't, it like regular jeans it needs to be stretchy and if it's stretchy i can get it a little smaller right so it's tighter on the waist but it's still you know stretchy enough to fit all this ass and thighs a lot of ass to fit in there <laughs> right but one of the companies I, i'm working with right now it's uh, uh chick me go to chickme.com if you're interested at all okay. they sell clothes for curvy models curvy women well that they sell clothes for all kinds of body shapes Sure, but great. their clothes fit me really well, and I'm actually, uh, yeah, working with them right now. Right, right, right. yeah. Because even, even apple bottoms would be uh, would be. Uh, <laughs> that's more than an apple bottom. 
Well, yeah, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more. That's like a cantaloupe bottom. That's a that's a lot of bottom. But I'm looking behind you, and I see that you have a uh, a Twitter pillow. I do, yeah. <laughs> which which leads me to another discussion, and uh, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to your ass in a second, but you say Twitter is. Uh, they allow more things on Twitter than they do on Instagram. Is that right? Yeah, Twitter is a lot more, um, a lot less strict than Instagram. I, I have, I've never had any issues with Twitter. Okay, so they and they don't, they don't allow nudity, but they or do they? They do. Oh really? Okay. They well. can post all kind of stuff on Twitter. There's porn, all, everything. Oh geez. Oh, they, they, penetra- I, there's women posting fisting videos on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, I, oh, well, you'll have to send, send me the link later. Buttholes. And, it, you know, it's fine. So, oh, okay. the thing is, you know, the thing is, I don't ever, like, I've never expected Instagram to be adult friendly just because I'm in the adult industry. Right. I don't care for that. I'm not in the position to dictate companies' rules. Right. Whatever your rules are, cool. I'll stick to that. Just make it concise. Make it clear. Make it simple so that everyone can follow and right. apply those rules across the board to everyone whether they're curvy black white thick slim it shouldn't matter rules right. are rules you understand yes so, right so basically th- that's my that's my issue with with uh with instagram twitter twitter is a lot better with that the rules yeah. are clear there's customer service customer support that you can reach out to they reply to reports. Great. That's the that's the other thing. If, if something happens to Instagram, there's nobody to. I mean, I guess you email them, but they don't respond. YouTube, yeah. same thing. I mean, you can email them, but I don't believe anybody's actually looking at that. Right. Nobody's ever replied to me ever, and I've I've reached out to Instagram hundreds of times. There you go. Right. There's no customer support with Instagram. There's nobody to reach out to, nobody to help your cause. Nothing. The reports are sometimes reviewed. Sometimes they just hover in review status for months. There's it's, same it's thing a, with YouTube. Same same thing. It's a huge mess, and uh, yeah, that's what I have a problem with, and mainly because it's it's messing up my money, you know, a lot. Let me right. give you an example, though. I have a girl that joined my program under my referral and then mm-hmm. later we clicked and she became one of my team members as well. She blew up on social media, blew up million, a million uh, followers like right. really fast, like a month, two months, super fast. So she blew up and you know, she was already on OnlyFans, but once that happened, once she blew up on social media, she made two hundred thousand dollars in a month. That's great. Right, amazing. Okay. Second month, it was a hundred and eighty thousand. That's when things started happening for her, and she started getting banned. You Ooh. know, for whatever reason. Again, no explanation, no warning. And I just, ever since then, I've been watching. Cause I have like we we're team members, so right. you know we talk about this. I've been watching her money plummet down, plummet and plummet, and it's strictly because of the social media bans, the restrictions that they put on your account. You know, she, is she so a big, I can even grow your account. People are not seeing you. That that's how the shadow ban works. Right. When you're shadow ban, which I'm shadow banned right now on Instagram. If you try to find me and you don't know my username, you just know Romy Chase something whatever. You have to type in my entire username to find I know. me. It was hard to right. find. To find me. And that's because of the shadow ban. That's how they make it that's how they make it so that people can't find you. Right. Because um, I had to go through your website because I didn't uh, right. it, there were fan pages, but I didn't find the right page. Right, right. And there's a bunch of fakes of me, you know. I, I'm like having a really hard time keeping up with reports and you know, reporting these accounts, trying to get them taken down. That's almost impossible to do that. But people have a really hard time finding my real account because of the bans that Instagram has been putting on my And on your my real account. account is where you make money. Right. And that's the only account that I have only have two accounts. I have Romy underscore Chase and then I have the real Romy Chase. Everything, is, everything else is fake. 
but people yeah. can't find me because of the restrictions you know it's because the restrictions just, and all the people that are putting duplicate accounts right, right. And, and then you know people all these the, these fakes they scam they try to get money out of you and and i can't keep up it's it's horrible and instagram's been really really i would go as far as saying abusive towards mm. curvy performers Yes. Now, now, your friend that you said that uh, this happened to was she curvy? Uh, she's she's definitely she's she's slim thick. Okay, so she definitely has a butt. She's on the slim side, but she's slim thick. Okay, right. and yeah, it's the same things happening. You know, it's it's always. Let me tell you this: it's not only curvy models that are going through that, but we're okay. being targeted more because we take more frame in a photo. Is if that I, what it is? I don't know what it is, but <laughs> in report, according to, I can't tell you 100%. It's only my speculations, unfortunately, right. because I haven't been able to speak up, speak to Instagram, you know? But they have put out a statement that they use technology to review reports, which that means it's a robot. Yeah. A lot course. of times, not probably it's not algorithm, yeah. time, but it's a robot that reviews it. So if I post a picture like this, my boobs take a lot of frame in a photo. Yeah. It's going to get flagged because there's a little more skin here showing than on a slimmer model. You understand? So a lot of that, a lot of that stuff, that's, that's, that's a problem. Just okay. being busty, being curvy, being thick, BBW, whatever you want to call it, you know? So yeah. it may be just that the algorithm is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just a faulty algorithm, but nobody's there to contact to get it corrected. Right, and I mean, you know, I don't care if it's your algorithm, your workers, whatever it is, I can't, I don't know. All I know is that you're biased, racist, sexist, fat phobic, <laughs> you right. know, that's all well, I know. That's what nobody, you're saying. Nobody cares, nobody cares to, you know, nobody cares why you said what you said, why you did what you did. All they know is your actions. That's what right. I see their actions as being racist, fat, fat phobic, you're taking money out of Romy Chase's pocket and you should be ashamed of yourself. Not just my pocket. <laughs> Thousands of women are going through the same issue. Well, you were saying that like uh, black models, same thing. Like uh, oh, absolutely. black models uh, are posing the same pose as white models and getting banned for it. Absolutely. that That's definitely another issue. Well, unfortunately, I can't really speak up about this too much because I'm white, so I don't know how that feels. But I have seen hundreds of of complaints from from black models yeah. from black curvy models um so yeah that's why i said it, it's safe for me to say they're racist fat phobic sexist homophobic really it, it, uh, yeah absolutely it's whether it's the algorithm the company itself the work i don't know okay i just right. know this is a huge 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 problem huge right. and it's women with accounts from a few thousand followers to a few million followers. So it's mm -hmm. everyone, you know, everyone's having issues. It, it's not like, like I said, it's not only curvy models, but we're being targeted more, I right. believe, you know? Well, uh, let, uh, Instagram re re better get its stuff in the shape. But we were, uh, we were talking about how you were, uh, you're uh, more sexual than the average person, apparently. Well. <laughs> is, that, is that something? Uh, something uh, that uh, you discovered at an early age? Have you always been like this? You know, I think I've always been like that, honestly. I've always been curious about things, you know? I've always been curious. I remember I was like 12 years old and, you know, trying to sneak into my parents' bedroom and turn on the TV and try to watch some of these adult channels just to see what's you know what I mean? I was 12. Right. I was trying to, I was trying to learn. I, I was always curious about this stuff. Uh, I never, never, until I came to America, I never thought I would ever do this. Mm -hmm. But I, I've always been a sexual person, yes. Right. And very, well, very open, very open to experiments. Always been attracted to American men and women? <laughs> um. I don't really have a preference when it comes to like appearance, honestly. I don't. Really? I, yeah, really. I just, I like chubby men and I like tall really? men. Mm. Tall men with short hair, chubby. 
Okay. That's running <laughs> my fingers in my hair. <laughs> but that's just my preference. And I think right. I believe this because I'm a big girl. I'm, I'm you know, I'm thick, I'm a, 190 pounds. So I, I need a man to, you know, be able to handle me. I can't do no scrawny dude. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you I wrestle. You probably, you probably wrecked a couple scrawny dudes in your time. I, I wrestle scrawny dudes, though. That's, oh, that's, really? I didn't know this. You wrestle what? scrawny dudes? I, I have done this in the past. I, I, want, I want to. I really want to get into it more. Unfortunately, we're in a pandemic, so I'm not sure right, right. as, as much as I want to. But I have done this before, and I loved it. It's a fetish, you know? To, to have, see a, a big girl wrestle and, and you know dominate wrestle. a small man because you, do- you are throw a small man around. I think the last guy was about maybe like ninety pounds and like four ten. Like oh jeez, four feet ten. Doesn't <laughs> so have a chance. He, he was he was scrawny. Was he like ten years old? Who, who, who is this kid? No, it was obviously it was an adult <laughs> man. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that you know that the, the what's the word um contrast yeah it's no i understand yeah big, big girl you know and the small man I, some people just really like it and i just found it i enjoyed it so much <laughs> i want to get into it <laughs> but yeah unfortunately I, I, but you're, you're short you're five four right you're just kind of you know right, but you know next to a four four eleven or four ten oh yeah no, you, you 90 pound guy i'm a giantess you know oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah i'm definitely not a tall not not a tall person no not right. at all but uh, but uh, no, it's, but you definitely you you are really get you're you're really um, dominant, especially on uh, on your OnlyFans page. But uh, you uh, now have you have have you in your wrestling uh, escapades have you sat on a guy's face? Yes, absolutely. That's and smothered that, him. That's what it was is what was one of the part one one of the things that I did. One one was a wrestling. Um, wrestling match and one was like a face sitting session more like an abusive face face sitting session. no I, i'm familiar i i had uh, i had a dominatrix uh, uh smother me on my show and it was uh and she was not even near i mean she had a nice nice juicy ass but it was it wasn't 53 inches and it was scary <laughs> there's there's a man i couldn't breathe it was scary <laughs> <laughs> there's a man who who just they're in my dm all day every day begging for sessions and stuff, you know, trying to <laughs> get this booty. <laughs> well, I, well, this is what I'm saying. You say that there's no, you know, and you have a million fans, so obviously you have fans that are fans of you for all sorts of reasons, or almost a million fans, but it's, it's coming soon. So, mm-hmm. you know, you have women that admire you, you have men that admire you, you have, um, you know, you you have, but I would say submissive men probably is, that's that's your number one fan base. I... I definitely have a dominant site. I wouldn't call myself a dominatrix because I still do, you know, upon requests and depending on, on, on you know, on, on the circumstances, I still film some submissive content. It's not like I don't ever do that. But I do definitely have a dominant site. I'm more inclined towards domination, female domination, other than submission. And uh, yeah, I would say probably submissive men, submissive fetish men, Probably my top fans, yes. Yes. Well, and obviously, you know, I, obviously, uh, I'm sure you have a big black following, black man, male following. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I'm a black and Hispanic. But I do also have a lot oh. of white men as well. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that because it, uh, uh, it's, it's not, there's, there's no shame in it in the black and Latin community. They like, they, they're, they're uh, adamant about they like that ass. And white men love it too. I mean, we, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, I mean, you're attracted to what you're attracted to. It's whatever makes yeah. you dig hard. But I think most men they like a, a curvy woman more than the media will allow I people to think. That. I heard that, you know. But I also, you know what? That's one thing that I heard in Poland so much, and it just stuck with me. And it was so wrong. It was it was definitely wrong. But I just had somebody write me the other day from Poland, the guy, mm-hmm. Polish guy. And, you know, he was just like, oh, you know, I love curvy women, but I think it's only because all the slim women are taken. And I was like, wow, no. <laughs> you know, but it, it's, you know, it's part of the brainwashing. 
that's somebody that's somebody <laughs> struggling with their uh, with with what they like and what struggling right. with their own sexuality. You know, it's 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 almost as if some men, because of the brainwashing, you know, it, that they've been exposed to in the media, mainstream media, they almost like it's almost like they're ashamed of what right. they like. You know, it, it's almost as if they don't want to be judged for that. And I've heard many times in Poland, back in Poland, people saying to me that you know, I love. I will. I would love to fuck a curvy girl. I want to fuck a BBW, but you know, I I prefer to bring a slim girl home, and it is so wrong. But I heard it so many times, and I never cared about this because it just that's the way it was back in Poland. But when I came here, I realized that it's it's absolutely wrong, you know, to even say that. Yeah, I mean, it's, you like what you like, and uh, who cares what I mean. It, it, this, is what, this is what uh, kills me. And the other thing is, I, I, I do think that uh, big curvy women are, uh, and big beautiful women, there is a, they are fetishized. For some reason, big curvy men like myself are not. And I, I, I frust <laughs> always frustrating to me. There's no big beautiful man convention. There's no be big beautiful man, except in the gay community. Right. You know, perhaps this Perhaps it should change. <laughs> yes, date. Yes, everybody should date big curvy men and women, and and trust me, you'll like it. But I just, I just want people to like finally like face themselves and be like, yeah, like you said, I like what I like. This is what I like. Right. We had um. We hey. had B yeah. We had the uh, uh, BBW porn star Alexis Allure on the show, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. she told me that she has people that uh, they're like uh, they're married to skinny women. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, oh yeah. But then that's, they like they go on her page and, and they want to do like role plays with her. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. Married guys that um, guys married to very slim women. They get on my page and they're just like, oh my god, I'm so into curves. I like a big ass. I like huge tits. The bigger, the better, you know. And then they start complaining about their wives, like you know, oh my wife doesn't have that. Oh my god, you know. Then why did you marry her? I mean, you know, you like what you like. That's, we need to, we all need to face that, right? Yes. We need to stop worrying about what others think because I think that's the issue. People I, were worried about, oh my God, what is the neighbor going to say, you know? Right. Like it matters. Like, is he paying your bills or something? <laughs> like, why exactly. are you worried about his Even opinion? if he is, who cares? But, right. Uh, right. I, I, here's, here's, here's why I really admire you. I admire you for all sorts of things in the, 53 inch ass is one of them, but. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, but uh, I admire that you are somebody that found out how to monetize dick pics. Oh, totally. I mean, you know, I, my thing is, as women, we've always been objectified, always for ages. And I'm just like, why not monetize it? You know, so, they've been objectifying <laughs> us anyway. Why not so, so tell us what you do on your OnlyFans page to monetize dick pics. I love it. I mean, you know, men seem to be really self-conscious about their penis size and they view me, you know, because I'm in the, in the adult industry, they view me as some, some sort of an expert um, because I've obviously seen hella dicks, okay? <laughs> Have you seen hella dicks? I've seen hella dicks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the hella dicks. So, you know, they want to know my, um, what I think. They want to know what I think. They want to know if it's enough to satisfy me, you know? They want to know yeah. if, if it's good enough, big enough, pretty enough, straight enough. I don't know, whatever reason. <laughs> and they are definitely paying for that, yes. I mean, I wouldn't, why would I, I'm already monetizing these sorts of things, you know? So guys, guys want to show you their dick. Yeah. And you're like, okay, 10 bucks. No, I don't. Or whatever, say that. however much it is. It's just, it's on my tip menu, on my OnlyFans. So once you log in, you, you see it right away, my yeah. tip menu, and it says dick rating $15, whatever. $15, yeah. And you can get a written rating, you can get a voice recording rating, you can get a video rating, whatever you want. And I, my thing, the thing about my dick ratings is they're always 100% honest. I think that's why a lot of men like it. Okay, I don't so bullshit around. I don't bullshit around. <laughs> you know? So how many? Uh, what would you say the percentage of dicks that you get get the thumbs up? 
it's about is half this, and half or uh... it's the rating from z like zero zero to ten and usually like a description that comes with it you know have you gotten a ten nobody has ever gotten a ten what's the highest rating somebody's gotten i like a nine all right that's, that's Again, pretty good like i said i am very honest and i'm um therefore i'm strict you know so okay. Yeah, you guys, if you think you got a 10, <laughs> sign up to my OnlyFans and hit me up. Let's see. <laughs> now, you say you say prettiness counts, too? Prettiness of the penis? Yeah. Well, it, I is, mean, is, it's not... Because no. <laughs> I've been told I have the most perfectly shaped penis. My ex-girlfriend told me that. I, I, showed her, I showed her my penis for the first time. She, just, she looked it up and down and said, it's like Mark, it's the most perfectly shaped penis I've ever seen in my life. Followed by, oh. it looks like it's never been used. I don't, and, uh, I don't like put it in categories like that. I just look at it overall. Okay. And you know, if it overall looks like an eight, then it gets an eight. I don't like strip it into categories. Like, oh, okay, well, that's a fantastic shape, but the length, you know, could look right, some right. improvement. I don't do that. I just look at it. Do I like it? Do I not like it? You know, Got and it. then I just make it do a short description of short, long, depends. Yes, oh, well, it depends on penis, obviously. Right. But I've heard that the, there's a fetish for guys that like to be told that their penis is short and, I and horrible. I don't get that. Why? I, 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 you would, I mean, you know, I, obviously I want you to be honest. But if you told me, yeah, as, as I've been told, honestly, most, most of the reaction to my penis is, yeah, it's a good size. Okay. But... Uh, if somebody's like, "Wow, that's amazing," which honestly I don't get, so I, you know, I'm, I'm, I figure I'm average, then I'd be like, "Hey, that's great." But if somebody actually looked at it and said, "Nah, that's way too small," I wouldn't be excited about that. Well, that's because you don't have a small penis humiliation fetish, you know. Right. Some people just don't understand it, and that you know, whatever floats your boat. That's what okay. I say. Yeah. Whatever floats your boat. If you like it, you went to it. Cool. I'm fetish friendly. I'm open to all fetishes. So all my fetish clients are whatever they're into, they're welcome on my page. But yeah, with the small penis humiliation, I, I love that. I love those men. They, they're they really good customers. I've became good friends with some of them actually. I mean, yeah. online. And yeah, I mean, they just want to hear, they want to be humiliated. They like the idea of female supremacy. They like female right. domination. Right. You know, they, they like to be verbally humiliated. And, you know, I believe 100% that if you have a small dick, if your dick is decrepit and small and like... <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. It okay, is, all right, small and decrepit. If it, it is, if it is, you probably already know that, okay? Right. Like, in no way in hell, you look at your two-inch penis and talk about how I'm, I'm a well-hung stud. It doesn't work like that. You right. know it's small, okay? So yeah. a lot of times, you know, I think this is actually really powerful that they turned it into something that they're into, you know? Okay. Instead of being depressed about it, they embrace it. That's yeah. a great thing. Okay. To turn lemons into lemonade, that's great. Right. I, and trust me, I, I, it, I'm not judging. If that's what gets you off, that's great. But it's just, I just don't <laughs> understand. There's fetishes I don't understand. Oh like, yeah, I, you know we have, we, we have foot fetishes uh, talk all the time, and fine, but I just don't understand it. It's not my thing. But uh, before we go, and I want, I, and we're talking an hour, we could talk for forever. Right? I, I, I love talking to you. You're, you're a delight. But I just want to tell you, there was a I've been I've been seeing on uh, on your social media that you you had a shoot, and you spontaneously ended up fucking the cameraman. Well, <laughs> how spontaneous was this? Seriously. <laughs> okay, so. Like, oh, I, I had no idea. I just ended up fucking the cameraman. Okay, so. Um, one and how thing. can I be your cameraman? That's what I want to know. <laughs> okay, one thing. <laughs> I'm mostly a solo performer. Mm -hmm. I solo content. Uh, right. I fetish, solo, all kinds of POV that mm -hmm. looks like fucking, but it's with a dildo. Okay? Right, so, right like a, a penis and it sticks out it's like your body is off the camera i do a lot of role play in my videos talking to you as if you're there right so that's what i i do i don't normally shoot with men 
the only um, time I ever shoot with men is if there's a special like reason. For example, I dropped uh, a dick sucking video, which was on, on a BBC uh, dick back in like August because it was one year anniversary of my OnlyFans. So it was special and it was available for a very lim limited period of time, which was only like right. seven days. Outside of that period, you can't buy it. It's already expensive, okay? But you can't buy it outside of that. That's how special it is. But right. the cameraman, what it was, we got together for the Halloween shoot. Because mm -hmm. I was doing some femdom, uh, female domination, pussy worship content with like some verbal humiliation, dildo, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Teasers, mm -hmm. photo shoot, all kinds of stuff. And we just, I don't know, we just like got really turned on doing that. <laughs> that was hot. Like it was really hot. That, that video, like that, that pussy worship femdom scene was extremely hot. And he was really involved in that because I was talking to him as if he's the, you know, the, the guy viewer. worshiping your pussy. And, right. And, and he was, you know, doing movements like, you know, as like moving the camera up and down as if he's saying yes or, you know, no. And mm -hmm. it was, just, it was really hot. Like we just, it was, it was spontaneous. I'm not gonna lie. It was not planned at all. Okay. It was just super, I just got super horny. Okay. I got yeah. extremely horny and I know he got horny. Okay. Not good man. <laughs> he just was like, okay, you know, why not? And you raise his dick anyway. and, it, and it passed muster and right. we were we was gonna do it anyway yeah. okay i mean we just we was feeling the moment so yeah and then we're just like okay well why not just you know film that and so we just did like a little pov and it was it, this is a limited time only thing too um yeah it's not available anymore <laughs> okay all right it was, it was only for like one week after halloween i extended it a few days because it sold really well people were really excited about this one yeah. Uh, but yeah, right now it's locked away in the vault and it will be available again for purchase around New Year's Eve. Okay. So, I just, I was yeah. just curious because, uh, well, you know, Halloween was a full moon, so that might explain a lot of what happened. But it, it, it will be available again around New Year's and again, probably for seven days, 14 days, and then I'll lock it away in the vault again because it's, it, it's really special to me. I don't do that normally. Right. I don't with well, guys. that's why I was, it seemed, it seemed a little too seemed a little too neat and uh, I thought I'd call you on your bullshit but I guess there's no bullshit it's not it was that's why that's why it was that's why it was such a good idea and that's why it was 100 percent successful you know because right. it was real it was raw oh mm -hmm. your lights went out yeah I don't know what happened my lights went out but yeah that's so weird <laughs> anyway so I guess that's a, that's the time to, to wrap up the show right uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I guess my lights went out. This, this, this has been so weird. We had the Zoom link go go last time, and then now now my lights are out. Um, but you are delights, <laughs> and uh, tell everybody where they can find you and Instagram. Let the curvy models do their thing. I um I encourage everybody to visit my website, which is romichase.com. Really easy to remember, romichase.com, and there you can find all my verified links. So it's easy to you know have everything that i got going on right there on on my website romancheese.com so go there check out my only fans this is where i'm most active i'm active daily i reply to all messages so uh yeah check out my only fans check out my instagram at romy underscore chase check out my twitter at romy uh, romy underscore chase as well and yeah <laughs> yeah, definitely get 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 her to a main Instagram fan soon and right. support her. And it's coming. It's coming. I'll, I'll be there real soon. I Hopefully. know you will. I know you will. Okay. Knock on wood. <laughs> yes. And uh, I I don't know what happened here. Like all my lights are out, but the computer's on and like other electronics are on. That's so weird. Anyway, uh, Romy, you are a delight. Uh, and definitely uh, check out the content because uh, you are a really sexy woman. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, nice I think, today. sorry. Nice talking to you today. Oh, it was so it was such a great conversation. I hope you come back, uh, and you're welcome back anytime. And uh, follow me, uh, Goth Comedian, on all social media. 
Dark Mark so on all social media. And everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Romy. I'm sorry about all the weird. <laughs> it's okay. I was just you. You look really funny. <laughs> it's like all, like seriously, all the lights went out, but 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 the computer's still on. So mm. weird.